This is the Alhambra Investments Weekly Market Pulse with CEO Joe Calhoun. And this week, uh, you started out with a couple of famous quotes, Joe. Uh, Warren Buffett said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And then the great Sir John Templeton said, where is the outlook most miserable? So uh, I guess the question is, you know, where are we? Because uh, what, S&P was down uh, 5%. Uh, last week, we opened this morning down almost another 3 uh, consumer price index was up to 8.6 last week. So what do you see out there? Well, there is certainly a lot of fear out there. There's no doubt about that. Now, uh, whether there's enough yet to call a bottom, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know that, uh, you know, Buffett has it right. And so does Templeton in that you've got to be a buyer when things look bad. Uh, that is how this thing works. That old buy low, sell high thing. You can't do the sell high part, unless you do the buy low part. And if you're going to buy low, it means you're going to be buying when things don't look so good. And so I think that's kind of where we are. Look, I, I, you know, I'm not in the camp that thinks that we're headed for, you know, another 2008 type episode, which seems to be what people are trying to price in. Uh, this is quite different. Uh, rates are still rising. Uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, recession's out there somewhere. I don't know where it is or how, you know, severe it'll be. But I, again, like I said, I think that, uh, like I said in the piece, I think that some of the things that are going on economically needed to happen. And so I, I don't I don't know if we should be surprised and I don't think they're necessarily bad things. Uh, so we can talk about that a little bit, I guess. Well, that's uh, as you said in the piece, some of these things are just necessary resets because things have just got way out of whack. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, housing prices have been going up 20 percent a year for a while now. I, I just, it's not sustainable. Uh, you had to it had to come back down. And the question was how? You know, is it going to come down, what, naturally, just on its own? Well, no, rates had to go up. And so you've seen mortgage rates go up to nearly 6% now, which is a huge jump from where they were. Um, and you'll see housing slow. But, you know, a 5%, 6%, anywhere in that range mortgage rate is not out of, you know, it's not that unusual. Uh, people will adjust and sellers will adjust and buyers will adjust and home builders will adjust. It's what economics is all about. You have to adjust to the conditions that you have. Uh, like I said, it was a necessary thing. You, 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 you know, we complain about people not being able to afford houses, and yet now we complain that the Fed's doing something about it. I don't think that really makes a lot of sense. The question is, how badly is housing going to get hurt? Housing is an important part of the economy. You know, how much is it going to slow down? Uh, I don't really have an answer for that. We're going to find out. Well, you and I have been around watching this long enough. Uh, I mean, we can think back to the 80s when uh, mortgage rates were at 14, 15, 16%. So people, we've been in a, in a pretty decent market for a long time and people are not accustomed to rates like this. Although, you know, five, five and a half, that's, uh, that's a little low if you look at historical average. Yeah, it's not that, you know, like I said, yes, you're right. It's a shock to people because they haven't seen it and certainly not over the last couple of years when rates got really low. But look, I, you know, I don't know how low the market goes. We're obviously down today. Uh, if we close down here, we're in a bear market on the S&P. Uh, I suppose that shouldn't be surprising. We already saw that in the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000. Um, how low does it go? Or does it, is this a, a time to be a buyer? Well, I think you got to start you know, nibbling at things here. You're down 20%. If you look historically, buying after you enter a bear market has been a pretty good deal. Um, so I think you got to start looking at some things. There are some things out there that are really cheap. And I think that, uh, you know, if you're not willing to step up when things are bad, well, you know, you're going to be kind of doomed to, to, uh, to whatever the average is, you're going to end up buying high and trying to sell higher, which people never really do. So I don't know. I, like I said, to me, this is just normal market things. It's normal investing. You got to be a buyer when things are cheap. So we're trying to, to look at that. We're not buying a whole lot. Uh, we bought a few stocks last week, which I kind of talked about in the piece, but uh, we didn't add anything to our our major uh, asset classes. Um, we're still sitting here with about 10 to 15 percent cash, depending on the account. So, I mean, we're kind of like I said, you got to start to put that cash to work somewhere. You, I think you got to, you know, once you're down 20 percent and then a bear market, I think that's when you got to start thinking about it. Well, you know, you had some interesting reaction from readers last week to a comment you made, but but specifically you had people who said, yeah, it's time to get in, but there were people uh, who wanted to go all in. No, 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 that's not really what I was saying. What I was saying was that people said that they thought I was saying that. Mm. 
uh, they thought that I was saying, because I said something about, you know, do you want to buy things when they're down or do you want to wait for them to go back up? And they said, oh, you're saying to go all in. I, I don't really understand this mentality of people who seem to want to do, it's, it's either all or nothing. Oh, I'm in stocks. I'm 100% stocks or hell, in some cases, 150% stocks, or I'm out and I'm at zero, or I've got to be short. And I just don't understand that mentality. Um, it's not the way we do things. And I don't think it's the way most people should do things. You do things in increments. And, uh, you know, the fact that we, that I say that, you know, you got to think about buying some things doesn't mean you need to rush out and spend all your cash tomorrow or, uh, and, and buy everything in sight. It's just, it's crazy to me. I don't, I don't know why people think that way. Um, and I'm not saying even now, I'm not saying if we're in a bear market, uh, we close down here today. I'm not saying you need to go out and spend all your cash tomorrow. But I do think that when things are cheap, you've got to be looking at, to buy things for the long term. Now, look, if you're a short term trader and you're worried about what's going to happen over the next month, well, then, yeah, that might be a problem. I don't know what's going to happen in the next month, but I know that if you buy in the middle of a bear market, you're ultimately going to be rewarded. At least that's always been the case in the past. Well, let's circle back around to uh, the way people feel, because you also talked about the consumer sentiment survey that came out. And I know you're not a fan of it, but you do look at that as a contrarian indicator. Well, yeah, like I'm not a fan of it because it's very politically skewed. It's a small sample size. It's usually 600 people, and I don't like the way they do the poll, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it is a, an interesting indicator. Uh, again, it's one of those things that's tough to do. You got to buy when the sentiment is negative. And consumer sentiment, if that mid-month preliminary number that came out last week at 50, if that sticks, well, that's an all-time low. Well, you know, if you look at the history of this thing, when you buy near a low, uh, you do pretty well in stocks if you do that. Um, so, I, again, I think you got to look at it. And I know it's not easy to do, by the way. You know, you, you see things going down and you don't want to step in. Uh, but that's kind of what this is all about. Listen, Warren Buffett. You know, it's interesting what he says about, you know, buying when people are fearful or being greedy when people are fearful. He's always said he's not a very good market timer. And if you think back to 2008, you know, he wrote that, uh, that editorial from the New York Times where he said, I'm buying American. Uh, well, that was in October of 2008. The market didn't bottom until March of 2009. Uh, he was not, he was early, put it that way. But ultimately, he was rewarded for buying when things looked pretty bleak. Uh, now, I'm hoping that we're not uh, in a 2008 scenario. I don't think we are. Um, so, you know, if, if the market goes down a little bit more from here, I don't, you know, I think that's, that, that is, it is what it is. But, you, you know, when you're in a bear market, that's when you got to be a buyer. So we're, we're there. And if you had to tell people how to go about that, uh, because most people invest with emotion and you got to well, take emotion out of it sometimes. Yeah. It, it, listen, it's very hard to do. I mean, look, I've been doing this for you know over 30 years. I've done it before. Uh, I've seen bear markets before. I've seen down markets. And it's, it's kind of scary sometimes. You don't want to step in. Uh, all I can tell you is that to concentrate on the fundamentals, if you're looking at individual companies, you know, we bought some fine companies last week for some very cheap valuations. Um, you know, that's what you got to concentrate on. You can, there's only so many things you can control. You can't control the market. You know, when you're an investor, there's, there's a limited number of things you can control. You can control your expense ratios, your expenses. You, you can, that's easy to control. Buy cheaper funds, buy index funds if you're doing that, um, and just be, be cheap about what you're doing. Uh, watch your expenses. The other thing you can do is pay attention to fundamentals. Look, don't buy stupid stuff. Look, we're seeing all this crypto, uh, the whole crypto universe is just coming unglued. And by the way, I think some of that may be spilling over into stocks and in that uh, a lot of times when people need to sell something, they sell what they can, not necessarily what they want to. Uh, so some of that may be spilling over from crypto here. Look, we had uh, a, another crypto coin fail last week called Celsius. Uh, Tether is not looking so great this morning. Uh, there was another one, Binance uh, shut down Bitcoin uh, withdrawals here a little while ago. So uh, you know, that's uh, an area where people were piling into this stuff. And I don't think most people even knew what the hell they were buying. Um, and there were no fundamentals to look at. It was purely a speculative asset. So when you're buying investments, when you're making investments, pay attention to the fundamentals, buy things that are cheap, buy things that have some growth prospects uh, and stick to it. You know, you're not going to necessarily catch the bottom, you know, but you can buy a good company at a good price. You'll be rewarded in the long run. 